have a look at this. It's the new Lenovo Legion 7i. And according to Lenovo, it is the world's most powerful 16 inch gaming laptop. Not too shabby. So I've teamed up with Lenovo and Intel for this video. They very kindly sent this model out for me to have a play with. It is a pre-release version uh, and also they are sponsoring this video. But as always, as you guys know, all opinions are my own. Now Lenovo say that this Legion 7i is purpose built to do everything. Gaming, streaming, intensive workstation level stuff. But we're talking serious performance here with up to an Intel Core i9-12900HX as well as a GeForce RTX 3080 Ti which can be boosted up to a 175 watt TGP. Plus there's up to 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM, a 165 or 240 hertz Quad HD Plus 16 by 10 screen. Fast PCIe 4 storage, we get Wi-Fi 6E, and also a massive vapor chamber cooler inside. And it's not just about the raw hardware because the Legion AI engine actually lets the system shift power between the CPU and the GPU based on what it needs, and also predicts and adjusts the fan curves to match, which is very clever. We also get a bloody great big 99.9 .9 watt hour battery in here, which is the absolute maximum you can get uh, while still being able to take this on the plane without being chucked off your flight. And it's also the first 16 inch gaming laptop with a 1080p webcam, which is very nice to see. Although I don't think there's a ton of competition out there in that regard. I have to say this looks pretty good. What do you think, Pete? Yeah, it's pretty good actually. Look at that. It's one of the best I've seen on a laptop, not just a gaming laptop. So it's full HD. I think it's the best webcam you can get on a gaming laptop, definitely. So before we get into the nitty gritty, how much are we talking? Well, the 7i will start at around $1,800 or so. Uh, and this top spec model or near enough top spec will set you back around $3,200. So obviously a good amount of money, but of course this is a flagship super high end laptop, particularly in this high spec. Uh, although I will leave links below in the description if you wanna check this out and also uh, see what the pricing is for where you live. So Lenovo described this as looking both stylish and savage, which I can kind of see. And the 7i builds on last year's already very impressive Legion 7. And actually this is 37% thinner. They've also got rid of the chunky fan ports on the side and it weighs just two and a half kilograms or five and a half pounds, which isn't bad at all for a 16 inch gaming laptop. Look at these bezels as well. They are ridiculously thin. You don't see that very often on a gaming laptop like this, nor do you see this. Well, actually two things. Firstly, if I close it, we've got this nice little one finger lift ridge so you can open it with one finger. And look at that, it goes all the way back. We have a 180 degree hinge, which is helpful if you're gonna use this on a laptop stand, or maybe if you're lying down with your knees up and you've got this on your lap, you know, that sort of thing. Having this more flexible hinge, which you can also see is nice and sturdy. There is not much screen wobble considering how flexible that is. It's very well built this thing. On the left side, we have two Thunderbolt 4 USB 4 ports. And on the right side, a single Type-C 3.2 Gen 1, as well as an audio jack and a webcam shutter switch for extra privacy. So what you can do if you're sick of seeing your own face or, well, more likely you're concerned about privacy, is just flick that little switch and it disables the webcam. Round the back, there's this new USB protection notch cutout that actually moves the port inboard a little bit so they're less likely to get damaged. And there's a lot going on back here, including an HDMI 2.1, a USB 3.2 with display port and also power delivery up to 125 watts. We've got the DC power port for the fastest charging and also a full size RJ45. I do always appreciate having the ports at the back because it means all those ugly cables are sort of hidden from you. They're not just sticking out the side. The keyboard's been improved as well with deeper key travel and better ergonomics. And also numpad squad rejoice, Lenovo haven't forgotten about you. You can even switch out the WASD keys for ones with macro controllable pressure sensitivity so they'll do different things based on your pressure, which is pretty cool. Although sadly I don't have them here with me to test out. There's also a whole bunch of go faster RGB on the Legion 7i with per key RGB on the keyboard, this strip along the front edge, on the lid, on the side vents and the rear vents, the ring around the fingerprint sensor slash power button uh, also changes depending on power mode. And of course this can all be controlled or turned off if you prefer through Lenovo's Vantage app. 
Okay, let's talk screens, because alongside this 165 Hertz Quad HD Plus option, we also have a what Lenovo call best in class 240 Hertz option, which also has VRR. And while this perhaps isn't best suited for esports gamers, who of course want the highest frame rates and probably just playing at full HD, although you can always just lower the res, I think this is the perfect balance for a 16 inch gaming laptop to have that quad HD resolution and either 165 or 240 Hertz refresh. But bear in mind, you are gonna need to get well, above 165 frames per second in your games to actually take advantage of that higher refresh. Both screens have three millisecond response times, NVIDIA G-Sync and Dolby Vision support. They also both peak at around 500 nits of brightness, which is actually pretty solid for a gaming laptop. And of course, they're both 16 by 10, which I love. Device manager, processors, look at this. This has got the i9. And it's got 16 cores, 24 threads, which should be plenty for pretty much anything you want to do. So there's two sort of high-end options with this. For the CPU, we've got the uh, i7-12800HX and also the i9-12900HX, which I've got in here. And being Intel 12th gen, we get all the benefits from the new clever hybrid core performance setup, which has a mix of performance P cores and also super efficient E cores, which work together to maximize both performance and battery life. 12th gen also gets Intel's Thread Director to minimize throttling games and Turbo Boost for extra performance during peak loads and also making sure background apps don't slow things down too much. We do also get Wi-Fi 6E with this, although of course remember you need a compatible Wi-Fi 6E router or router to go along with it, although for pro gamers you're more likely to use the RG45 uh, Ethernet port instead. But let's get back to that world-beating gaming performance, and along with the 12th gen Intel Core i9, we also have the RTX 3080 Ti, which right now is the fastest graphics card you can get in a laptop, and it's also had a 17% boost in TGP over the regular Ti that you'll find in most laptops. This is 175 watt TGP over 150. So let's jump into some games, and starting in Halo Infinite, with ultra settings of course, I averaged a very smooth 137 FPS at Full HD+, plus, or 104 FPS if you jump up to the native Quad HD+. Plus. In Forza 5, still my favorite racing game by the way, and while this is not actually the best optimized game out there, at ultra settings I still averaged 101 FPS at Full HD+, plus and 87 FPS at QHD+. Plus. The system hog that is Flight Sim was also totally smooth and playable, clocking in at 65 and 55 FPS respectively at the two resolutions. This game really does need a DLSS patch. And actually, if we dive into a couple of benchmarks, again, these are some of the highest scores I've ever seen from a laptop like this. So you can absolutely use this for both gaming and also as a desktop workstation. But with great power comes great heat obviously. The good news is that both the GPU and the CPU are cooled by the massive Legion Coldfront 4.0 vapor chamber, which uses liquid crystal polymer fan blades, which apparently are now 67% thinner this time. In terms of airflow, there are 1100 individually drilled air intakes either side of the power button. 1098, 1099, 1100. Yep, bang on. But considering I do have the top spec components here, the 7i does get quite warm. Things are kept under control at low loads, but for some reason when it's plugged in, the fans seem to be louder than I would expect. Although thankfully, even when gaming, they're not too intrusive, and also they do a good job making sure it keeps clock speeds consistent over time. I do have one criticism though, and that is the battery life. Lenovo claimed that this should have last up to 10 hours, obviously that's sort of with light use non-gaming, but I didn't get anything like that, unfortunately. Uh, even after an hour of running my YouTube test, full HD, 200 nits of brightness, pretty normal stuff, it used 50% of the battery, which, which suggests I'm only gonna get two hours of light use. So I reckon there's maybe something going on with this pre-release model. Perhaps bear that in mind if you look at or read other reviews as well. So fingers crossed it will be better, but right now battery life is a bit on the plus side, we do get a fast 300 watt power brick, which Lenovo say will give you a 70% charge in just half an hour and a full charge taking around 80 minutes. But still, this is one of the best and crucially most powerful gaming laptops you can buy. I'm not sure I could go as far as to say it's the world's fastest, I'd have to have them all here and do those comparisons myself, but it's certainly impressive as you'd expect for those specs and of course that price. I would have quite liked to see a mini LED option for some higher brightness. Uh, also, it does get a little bit warm, and that battery's left me with a couple of questions. But what do you reckon? Are you impressed by the new Lenovo Legion 7i? And also, if you've got any questions at all, let me know in the comments below. And if you do fancy finding out more about the Legion 7i, or maybe even buying one for yourself, then I've put a link in the description below. 
Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more from me, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. And I will see you next time, right here on the Tech Chat.